Bridget Rowland here again. Today I'm going to show you how to add the depreciation of a fixed asset in zero so that it shows up correctly in your balance sheet and your profit and loss. And it's quite simple to do. Follow me step by step and you'll be fine. So what is depreciation? Well, it's just a portion of the value of a piece of plant machinery or equipment such as office equipment or a, a fixed asset like a vehicle or a building. It's, it's the portion of the value of that asset that has expired at a point in time. So at any point in time after you've bought it, it's worth less than you paid with a few exceptions. So what we're trying to do is account for that amount of money that we've lost on that asset because it's just getting old. Your depreciation amount for each item will be determined for you usually by your tax accountant or tax advisor or your compliance accountant. And it will either need to be done on a monthly basis or on an annual basis, which is something you'll decide between you. But that's where you get the figure from to work out what to put into your system. Now, I will point out that Xero does actually have a fixed asset register that will do it automatically when you set set it up but not everybody actually wants to use that spe specifically if you don't have lots and lots of assets so this is based on you just having a straightforward system that you want to follow and that you can add for yourself manually so first thing we want to do is go to our chart of accounts to make sure that the accounts that we need are already set up or need to be set up so to do that if we go to accounting and if you come down you'll just see chart of accounts and just click on that and it will take you straight there so to do this you're going to need three accounts in your chart of accounts so i'm just going to scroll you could actually come in here and just type in um fixed or if you know what the account was you can put in um equipment in fact, I'm just going to do our search equipment. So, okay, we're going to use the office equipment account. And you can see there are some assets in there at the value of 366563. It hasn't been depreciated yet. So we're going to use the office equipment. And this is the cost account. So when you buy something and you enter the bill for it, it will end up in here. After we've depreciated it, what will happen is this will increase by the amount that we've lost because this is a depreciation these two appear on the balance sheet because your balance sheet is all about the things you own and the things you owe so the value of things within your business we also have depreciation on your income statement or profit and loss account and that is the trading cost. So depreciation is also a cost. So here we're showing how the asset is losing value. And on the profit and loss, so I'm going to put depreciation. So I've just typed in depreciation and search for it. You can scroll down to, and that sits in the overheads um, type. So if I click on that, and here it's got depreciation expense and it's an overhead. If you don't have these, you will have these in zero. They're default accounts, but you can add extras. But as a rule, tend to stay within the main ones. And in their fixed asset register, you can individualize by bills, but still keep them under the main accounts. So you can have 10 things under office equipment, you know, four buildings and how many other motor vehicles. But I'm not, as I said, I'm not going to go into that right now. I just want to show you how to do the straightforward depreciation um, calculation. So that's that. So where they show up, as I said, if we go to the balance sheet, so if I come up here and I go to accounting and I'm just going to pick the balance sheet, make sure you change the date range to what you want it. This one defaults to the end of the financial year. So we'll do it to the end of the last quarter, which is yesterday. Or you could do it another day you want. We're not going to compare it to anything. We just want to see what the total of our balance sheet balances look like. So at the moment, our assets show that we've got a minus in computer equipment. There could be a number of reasons for that. We're just going to concentrate on the office equipment, 
because that is where the item is that we want to depreciate. These ones with the blue highlight means that they're hyperlinked. So if I click into there, you'll see what that amount of money is made up of or what assets you bought. So you can see that on the 12th of May, sorry, 12th of May. Oh, this is a correction. So it was coded somewhere else, but here is what we're after. So there was a bit of office furniture, a coffee table for the reception, which cost nice round thousand pounds. And that's what we're going to depreciate. So the next thing I'm going to quickly show you is the profit and loss. So if we go over again to accounting, come down and click on the profit and loss, open that up. And then we want to set it to the same period. Well, it's in the date range of the 1st of April to the 31st of March, 2020. So it is in the date range that we're looking for. Now, if we come down, we'll see that nothing has been depreciated yet. So I'm going to leave that there. So we know that our piece of office equipment cost a thousand pounds when we bought it. And we want to, to depreciate that over four years. This is what your accountant, our accountant has decided. We're going to depreciate it over four years in what we call a straight line depreciation method. So basically it means each year we depreciate it by 25%. So 1,000 divided by four is 250 pounds. As at the 30th of June, which is our depreciation date, which the accountant has also specified, we're going to depreciate it by 250 pounds. And how we do that is by way of a journal. So if you're used to using zero, you might find that you come over to this plus sign and you pretty much quick launch most of the things you want to do. And you'll see one of them here is a manual journal for the, in the interest of being uniform with this tutorial, I'm going to go back to the accounting because if you come back here each time, you can find what we're looking for. So when we came the first time, we found the chart of accounts. Second time was our balance sheet. Then we found the profit and loss. This time we're going to create a manual journal. So you create a new journal and in here, you can put whatever you want it to be. So if this is a one-off, you can just put um, a description that's very clear what you've done when you're looking for it. So it will come out in a list of journal transactions and you put something in then it makes it easy for you to pick it out if you want to come and look at it again. Office, desk, D, make sure I can spell, uh, as at June. 2020 this is the first one so you might you don't have to but you might put um first then you put second when you do it again and third in the following year but this is annual so it doesn't actually make a lot of difference so then we, this is as at the 30th of june 2020 now here when it says default narration to journal line description is when you leave that there you just click here it just copies what you've put at the top. So you don't have to keep typing. You might not want to put that again. You can change it if you want to. It's just a little quick time saver. So the first thing we want to do is put in a debit a de for the depreciation on the profit and loss. So we want to show that the cost to the company, because depreciation is a cost, has increased by £250 as at this moment. So we're going to find, we type it in, hopefully you can, oh, number one, first one there, depreciation expense. And it was depreciated or increased by 250. Okay. So then what we want to do is, as you say, we click it, it repeats it. We want to increase. Don't worry about what's debits and credits. All I'm teaching you is just how to put it in zero. Let the accountant worry about what it all means if you don't need to. All we want to do is credit the balance sheet. So we're going to debit up here the expense and credit the asset or what we'd want to do is move it out of the asset and into the depreciation code. So it was, if I put in depreciation again, we want equipment. I called it office desk. It's a coffee table, isn't it? But bear with me, you know what I mean. So automatically it drops in 250 because zero is always trying to balance it out for you. So there you go. So that is your journal. So again, the depreciation up until the point, the date we want, to, we want it to accumulate to. 
250 here, 250 here, which is one quarter, one of four depreciations that we're going to do over the life of the actual asset. And now you can actually say that as draft if you wanted your accountant to double check it. But frankly, if he's going to do that, he might as well do it himself or she might as well do it herself. And we post that. And you will see it's taking you back to the list of manual journals and you want to click the all button. And this here will show you all the journals that you have. So if you ever wanted to come back and find it, when you clicked on manual journal, this one now appears. So what is the effect now on your reports? So firstly, let's go back over to the balance sheet. So I would always recommend that you double check the date, click update so that any changes are registered. So now when we come back to it, what you will see is under your assets, you will see the office equipment. Now this confuses some people because if you've used other software for QuickBooks, for example, when you run that or you create that manual journal, it actually decreases the office equipment figure and then moves it over to the accumulated depreciation. What this one does in zero is it leaves the original cost the same, but minuses the entire tangible assets to the new total figure. So if we had looked at this before, it would have been 250 higher. So, but you will see here that this wasn't there before when we looked at the, the balance sheet previously, but now it shows up. And then if we go over to the profit and loss, again, we're in the right time frame. just update that. And if we come down and look at our costs, we will see we now have a depreciation expense of 250. So that's either side of that journal. It may be that you do actually want to keep a separate record of it. You still have your spreadsheets or you actually go and use, and I shall show you where it is, though I won't actually show you how to use it today in this particular video anyway. Again, accounting and fixed assets. And I will just click on it. Let's have some fun just briefly. This really is useful if you have a number of assets and you want to put them all in and be able to track them individually in the same way as you would any kind of inventory. But for the purposes of this video, we'll stick with what I've shown you. This is your accountant has given you some figures and you just need to enter them in. This is what I tend to show bookkeepers as well. That's it. Don't forget to subscribe. Give this a thumbs up if it was useful to you. And thanks very much for watching. Take care. Bye bye.